Can a power station lower your electric bill? And what about a solar generator setup? We are gonna find out in this video. The key to it all is that some EcoFlow power stations have two hidden features that supposedly make this easy. So I'm gonna test each one out for a couple days. I'll track everything along the way. We'll see if these features work. And at the end, I'll share all my numbers publicly so we can find out if a small power station or solar setup can save you money. When I say they're hidden, I really mean it. You have to go deep in the settings to find them. Here they are, operating mode page. They're called time of use mode and self-powered mode. Let's test out self-powered mode first because it is so cool in concept. It essentially turns your EcoFlow into a mini grid tied solar setup with a backup battery. So you'll need a solar panel for this one. And then right away, the app will ask you to set something called a backup reserve level. It has a little explainer here in the app if you wanna pause and read that. But essentially at above this level, the power station should only charge from solar power and then at or below this level, it should pass through grid power. To start, I'm gonna set it to 75% so we can test this feature out. Now I'm gonna plug the power station into the wall using this smart plug. Again, I'm tracking everything along the way. And when I do that, I want you to pay attention to this input number here. Because we're above the backup reserve level, it shouldn't start charging from the grid yet. Still zero watts, that's exactly what we wanna see. Now I'm gonna start solar charging it with a 200 watt solar panel that I put outside in my yard. So I'm gonna connect this to one of the solar ports back here and it should start solar charging. There it goes. It's charging at 150 watts, 155. Yes. And we can see in the app, even though this power station is plugged into the grid, no grid power is coming in right now. It's only the solar power. And we can even see, you know, self-powered mode activated right here showing us this. Maybe you can see where this is all going, but my hope is that you'll be able to use a setup like this to more easily solar power small spaces like a room. Now I wanna make sure that when I plug in a device, it doesn't pull from the grid yet because it's above the backup reserve level. So I've turned on the AC outlets. I'm gonna plug in this small space heater, just turned on. Look at that, output is around 500 watts or 450 watts, and it looks to still only be charging from my solar panel. And in the app, we can confirm this, 99 watts coming in from the solar panel, about 450 watts going out to AC, still none coming in from the grid. I'm gonna run the heater until the battery drops below 75% and we'll see what happens. We just hit 75%. I'm watching this number right here to see if, it, if this power station starts pulling from the grid. Not yet. We just hit 74%, it's below the backup reserve level and it is not yet pulling from the grid. It still only seems to be charging from the solar panel. Okay, I just heard something. There we go. Now it's starting to pull from the grid. That was a little weird. Just like that, we're back up to 75% and the power station is still pulling from the grid. Interesting, so the grid input is 478 watts currently, which exactly matches the AC output. So it is just matching the AC output currently and then the solar charging is just happening on top of that. I guess it just has to charge above the backup reserve level of it. The power station finally stopped pulling from the grid when the battery hit 85%. It's already back down to 83%. And you can see it's only pulling from the solar panel, no longer pulling from the grid. So the backup reserve limit does not really work the way I had assumed it would work. It seems to work as more like a midpoint in a range with an upper and lower bound. And it's fine if it works that way because I can imagine switching back and forth constantly might stress the machine in some way, but they do not communicate that at all in the app. It was confusing and it felt like a buggy experience. So it works, but I'm still a little skeptical of how well, but it was time to run my workstation off of it for a couple days to see if it could save me any money. The first day was a perfect sunny day and the solar input far exceeded how much power my workstation was drawing. And I did my first check of the smart plug data, expecting to see that the power station was using zero grid power, but it was in fact using 1.4 watts. Otherwise, the setup was working well. The battery even reached 100% at one point and never dropped below the backup reserve level. So my workstation was 100% solar powered that day, ignoring those 1.4 watts we saw. Pretty freaking cool. The next morning I turned on my workstation and plugged in a couple lights for filming, but the cloud soon rolled in and the battery quickly dropped to the 72% we saw before, though I didn't catch that on camera. 
and then it charged back up to 75 and started passing through grid power for the rest of the day. All right, the two days of testing are done. So how well did self-powered mode work? We saw some quirks initially with how the backup reserve level works in practice, but despite that, self-powered mode worked basically exactly as I had hoped it would. So at this point, I'm feeling confident that this setup could be more or less permanent and I could have a solar powered workstation, which is awesome. Okay, all my optimism aside, what about the numbers? How much energy did I actually save doing this? I pulled all the numbers from the power station in the smart plug and I'll put screenshots up here of the day by day breakdowns for you to look at, but I'm gonna talk totals. Over two days, the power station recorded 840 watt hours from solar. On day two, it misclassified the solar as car charging for whatever reason, but it was solar charging. Now the power station would lead you to believe that there were 52 watt hours pulled from the grid, but the smart plug says there were 150 watt hours pulled from the grid. And that means over these two days, roughly 85% of the energy used by this power station and therefore my workstation came from solar power. And don't forget, that's with a very high backup reserve. But how much money could a setup like this save you on your power bill? Could it partially pay for itself? Well, right off the bat, there's a way you could save hundreds of dollars which is to not even buy the solar equipment to begin with. 200 watt solar panel, extension cable, adapter cable, this stuff all cost me $300. So do you even need the solar equipment? Could you just use an EcoFlow power station by itself to save you money on your power bill and use more renewable energy? That is where time of use mode comes in. Time of use mode essentially tries to outsmart the power company's pricing schemes because a lot of power companies now change the price of electricity depending on the time of day. So the idea is to store energy when electricity prices are cheap and then use that cheap stored energy when electricity gets expensive. It's kind of like paying for an Uber at 4 a.m. when prices are low and then redeeming that Uber ride at Friday at 9 p.m. when everyone's taking Ubers and surge pricing is crazy. For this to work though, your power company has to do time of use pricing. And for it to work best, the things you run with the power station need to use power during peak electricity hours, which is why I've brought mine downstairs to power my TV. Now that I've got my power station set up, I input my electricity rate plan. Now, my utility does not do time of use pricing, so I input an example one that I found, or a real one actually, that I found from Southern California and I'm just kind of using it as an example. So during the winter months, the electricity is cheapest from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and it's most expensive from, looks like 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Then I switch over to time of use mode and I'm going to reduce my backup reserve to 10% to use as much of that stored electricity, cheap electricity, as possible. Nothing is happening yet, but I can see on the home screen, time of use mode is on, and it looks like the plan is to charge the power station from two to 3 p.m., which lines up with when electricity is cheapest. And that should be everything I need to do. I could connect a couple solar panels, but I don't have to for this mode. So I'm gonna let it run for a couple days, see how well it actually works, and find out if it can save you money on your power bill. So I just started going about my business, and at 3 p.m., the power station did start charging as it said it would, and quickly charged up to 100%. For the rate plan I'm following, electricity gets expensive at 4 p.m., and as I'd hoped, the power station entered that period with a full battery. And when the evening rolled around, I turned on the AC outlets, and then I started using my TV just like I normally would to play music, and then after dinner to watch some TV. And during that whole time, the power station was only using battery battery power until 9 p.m. when it started passing through the grid power, which I thought was an interesting choice since that was still not the period with the cheapest electricity. And the next morning, right at 8 a.m. when electricity became cheapest, nothing happened. Is this a bug? Shouldn't it start charging? So I went to the operating mode page to check my settings, and right when I opened that page up, I heard a click from the power station, and then it started charging, almost like it needed to be reminded. So we'll see if that happens again tomorrow. And when I came back from the gym, the EcoFlow was fully charged. The second evening went well, but the next day I wanted to see, was that bug still there? So this time I waited until almost 4 p.m. to check the power station, and it had not yet charged. So I did that thing again where I opened the operating mode page, do nothing, and then suddenly the EcoFlow remembered that it should be charging, and it started charging. What the heck? 
And that concluded my two days of testing for time of use mode. It was actually closer to like two and a half. I let it run for an extra evening to collect a little bit more data. But man, time of use mode was buggy. We found a big bug, a critical bug. So hopefully they patch that soon. And if they do, then it should work more smoothly. But let's go ahead and look at the results. This data came from the smart plug. So you can see hour by hour breakdown for time of use mode here. And then the rest came from the EcoFlow. We'll look at self-powered mode first. And like we talked about, 85% of the energy over those two days came from solar. So I added up all the totals, everything. I'm not gonna go into the details with these numbers because there's a lot. So I'll leave a link below to the spreadsheet. I'll just cover the highlights. I calculated something called the grid energy offset with solar. That's just the name I give it. So I figured out how much grid energy my workstation would have used without this whole setup, and then how much grid energy it actually used. The difference is how I figured out this number, and that's what I'm gonna to use to calculate my savings. Could be better in some cases. You can imagine a more ideal setup that uses, or that, that offsets maybe two to three X uh, the amount of grid energy that mine did. Um, my cost of equipment, solar equipment was $300. Could be cheaper. I could have found cheaper solar equipment, but I just used what I had. The EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, $700 for a total of around 1,000. To estimate savings, I need to know the cost of electricity, so I grabbed three, mine from my most recent power bill, the national average, and then California, because that's a place with really expensive electricity. Savings, so over two days, I saved a whopping six cents. For the national average, you'd be saving about nine and a half cents in California around 18 cents. So I did broke it down per day and then per month, how much would you save at the end of the month? For me, 92 cents, national average, uh, 142 in California, $2.65. So not a lot at all. But I'm curious, if you're doing something similar like this, let me know what your numbers are because that is the best I could imagine based on the data I collected. For fun, I also calculated payback period it's decades long. Do the numbers look better for time of use mode? $300 instant savings, not having to buy the solar equipment? Let's talk about it. First off, this chart is really cool because even without solar panels, you could be using more solar energy. How the heck does that work? Well, it depends on where you live. In some places with a lot of solar, like California, then the hours when electricity is cheapest line up with the hours when electricity is actually cleanest. You can see that here on this chart. So you are saving cheaper energy for later. You're also saving cleaner energy for later because that's the time when all the state's solar panels come online and start producing power. Collected all the data, broke it down by pricing period. You can see I called them super off peak, off peak and peak, corresponding with cheapest, mid and, and most expensive. My cost of equipment here is 700 bucks. So for this one, I made this really cool chart it shows you time of use mode in action. Without it, most of the energy being used by my TV is during peak hours. With it, we've shifted that, almost all of it, to super off peak hours. So that's how savings is supposed to work. Let's see what they are. I had to go on the internet, find more examples of utilities that do time of use pricing. You could look at that here if you want. And I calculated the electricity cost without time of use mode and then with it, let's just jump straight to savings. So the total over the three days for the Southern California example, nine cents from a utility from Arizona, 25 cents. And then Excel Energy from Colorado, six cents. Broken down per day, per month, I'm saving 93 cents or 250 or 63, depending on where I live. Once again, the payback periods are decades, if not lifetimes long. Dang, that is disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. I had high hopes when I was coming into this test. But if you wanna save money with solar or backup batteries, I also recommend looking into a professionally installed system. The reason being that as you scale up, the numbers can begin to make more sense. So I'll put a link below to a solar calculator if you wanna estimate how much you could save going that route. Don't get me wrong though, this setup is still good for power on the go, backup power during a blackout, and I will definitely be using my EcoFlow in self-powered mode when I'm not using it for those other things because sure, I'm saving a few cents per day, but also I'm using more clean energy and maybe I'm weird, but I think it's cool. But we're not at the point yet where small solar generator setups, small power stations can save you enough money on your electric bill to pay for themselves within any reasonable time frame. <laughs> 